In this video, we are going to quickly talk about DC or direct current voltage sources and the difference between an ideal voltage source and a practical or realistic voltage source. So first a note about the symbol. So far in this series, I've generally been drawing the symbol for a battery, which again, depending on where you look, sometimes it'll have multiple cells drawn like this, but we're not too worried about that. It generally means the same thing. You also might see textbooks use a circle like this with plus and minus symbols on it, and then maybe a label next to it like VS or just a number like 15 volts. Maybe sometimes the plus and minus symbols will be drawn outside the circle. So these all generally mean the same thing. We're talking about a DC or direct current, direct current voltage source, meaning it is providing a constant voltage. So that's different from an AC or alternating current voltage source, which we'll see with the squiggly line we'll talk about later in this course. So in the ideal case, any of these, a DC voltage source provides a constant voltage regardless of the load applied to it. So what that means is if we look at what is called an IV graph for this source, so a graph of the current versus the voltage, that regardless of the current drawn from or put into the source, we don't usually think of current going into a voltage source, but for example, something like charging a battery, you could have current going into the source instead of out of it. Regardless of that current, this thing can provide a constant voltage Vs. Now, if you think about Ohm's law, say I have a battery or a voltage source and I just short circuit it to itself. So I don't connect an external resistor at all. I just connect the, <clears throat> excuse me, positive terminal directly to the negative terminal. So Ohm's law is V equals IR. So if I want to calculate the current coming out of this battery in that case, well, my resistance is zero. So if I equals V over R and R is zero, then that's a problem because that means current is going to go to, sorry, current is going to go to infinity. And that means I'm kind of going off to the positive edge of this graph here where I still have my constant voltage, but current has gone off to infinity. So Clearly, that can't be the case in the real world, right? Like if you take a AA battery and short circuit it to itself, you're not gonna get infinite current out of a single AA battery. So there has to be something else going on there or some oversimplification in this model that isn't accounting for the fact that you can't get infinite current out of a AA battery there. And what we're missing is the internal resistance of the battery. So every battery has some sorry, battery or other DC voltage source like a wall power supply or your phone charger or anything like that has some non-zero internal resistance to it. And we model that as an ideal battery, or again, I could have used the circuit symbol here for a general DC voltage source in series with a resistor. So we'll call that voltage VS and internal res source resistance RS. And that is going to form up our practical or realistic voltage source or battery, which you then connect to your external circuit. So say we have our voltage source with internal resistance RS connected to an external resistor RL, then we see that what we formed here is a voltage divider. So you can watch the previous video for that. I'm not gonna rederive that equation here, but the actual voltage that I will get over the load, VL, is gonna follow the voltage divider equation, which is RL, over RS plus RL times VS. So ideally you wanna get as much voltage as possible over your load, which means in this case you want RS to be as small as possible. So when RS is much, much less than RL, then VL is going to approach VS. This also solves our problem about getting infinite current. So if I take my realistic battery model, which has that internal resistance Vs, and I short circuit it, now I have some non-zero resistance in the way. So Ohm's law Vs equals I Rs. My maximum current that I can get if I just short circuit this battery to itself with no external load is gonna be Vs over Rs. So my maximum current is limited by that internal resistance. I don't get infinite current. This also explains something interesting you might have noticed if you have ever tried to measure the voltage of a seemingly dead battery, and we'll talk about um, voltmeters in some of the next few videos, you'll see that, for example, if I have 
<clears throat> VS and RS, and I measure VS at the output here with a multimeter that doesn't draw any current. So again, we'll talk about ideal and practical multimeters and whether they draw any current in the realistic sense in the next few videos, but just think about the ideal case where I'm measuring this output voltage and the current is zero when I'm measuring that voltage. So if the current through this resistor is zero, the voltage drop across the resistor is zero, and I'm still gonna measure VS here. So you can measure a dead battery and get a voltage across it. The voltage of a dead battery does not drop to zero. The problem is that as the battery ages, that internal resistance gets really, really big. So when you attach an external load to the battery and try to have current flow, remember Ohm's law is V equals IR, which in this case is gonna be times your equivalent resistance, REQ, which is gonna be RS plus RL, Vs, Vs, so I equals Vs over Rs plus <coughs> Rl. As Rs gets really, really big, the current is gonna get really, really small. So you can have, you know, you put your batteries in a toy, or just say motors are great because motors draw a lot of current. Say if you have a toy with motors in it and you try to turn it on and the motors don't spin, that's because they're not getting enough current because that internal resistance of the battery is so high, but then you take a multimeter and measure the open circuit voltage of the batteries and you still get a voltage across them and this is why. Okay, the internal resistance has gotten really high but that doesn't affect the voltage reading when you just measure the open circuit voltage. It's not until you close the circuit and try to draw current through that really, really high resistance that again, think about this equation, as the resistance of the source gets really, really high, the voltage you get across your actual load gets really, really low and you're not gonna get enough power to your load. So if you've ever thought you had dead batteries and gone to measure the voltage and expected the voltage to be zero, this is why. So even this model is still somewhat of a simplification. Again, this internal resistance is not constant. It changes as a battery drains and the voltage is also not con constant. There are chemical things going on inside a battery that I won't even attempt to explain as a mechanical engineer, but this voltage is not perfectly constant as the battery drains. So both of those things do change as the battery ages. So if you wanna find more out about that, you can look at the battery's data sheet if you have you know very specific case where you need to know exactly how those parameters are going to change over time. There's also a really nice technical bulletin by Energizer that gives you more information about battery internal resistance and how it's defined and measured and everything. So I will link that and an example of a data sheet in the description of this video. In the next video, we are going to talk about current sources, which are not as common as voltage sources, but something you still might encounter. So again, we are going to talk about them in the same fashion where we talk about an ideal current source and what a practical or realistic current source actually behaves like.